and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends. And our topic today is very sensitive. And I would appreciate really that people don't bash any church. Otherwise, we will block you. We will prevent you from even being with us. This is a topic is not about uh, dividing the Christians, but to unite them. The title, it might say, who is better Catholic or Christian or, uh, I mean, better Christian, Catholic or Protestant or Orthodox. But you will see that we don't agree really with all those names in when it's come to who is better. We know that there's many people, they love to divide us and they love to spread division. And division is a new religion, actually, have nothing to do with Christianity or Christ. And there's many naive people, you know, they just follow the trend. So you will see in the comments somebody saying, oh, Protestant are better. Oh, Catholic are better for sure. Oh, Orthodox are better. And we know that this is absolutely false. We have one person to listen to. And he never mentioned to us to be any of what they say. Neither Catholic, neither Protestant, neither Orthodox. And I know some people, they wouldn't support what they believe or they are sect by quoting verses, which nowhere it says what they are saying. But this is how Satan, he work. Satan, if he could not come to your house from the door, well, he would come from the window. If he could not come from the window, he will come to you in a form of a priest. Isn't it Jesus said, be aware of false teachers. They will come to you in the clothes of a sheep, but they are wolves. And what the, what the wolves want? Do the wolf enjoy seeing Christians are united? You know the answer. You know, you know better, right? You know that the wolf will never really like you as a Christian to be one church, one loving people. We know that the Lord, he said, from their fruits, you shall know them. He did not say to us from a name, from a look, from a skin color. He did not care for us if we are black or white or Asian. He didn't care for the language we speak. He said that from their fruits, you shall know them. And I think the verse is so clear and his word is the best to listen to. If we look at the fruit in front of us here, well, they are fruit, you know, and they look so good. But one, we did not make them. This is God made. This is God made. But what is God made, even that one, needs somebody to do harvesting. Needs someone to take care of the tree, uh, protect the tree from cold, from pest, from diseases, from fungus, from, 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 in order to get this beautiful tree. So God, he gave us a beautiful, you know, creation around us. Either we destroy it or we preserve it and protect it. And we have a freedom to do that. We can cut the tree or we can protect the tree. Do as you wish. God, he said, go and live. And the sun will appear over the evil and the good. So the, God, the evil person, he will enjoy the sun like you. So when God, he gave us the fruits, he did not give us bad fruits. He gave us good fruits. And when God, he asked us for fruit, he is not asking us actually for our own fruit. He is asking us to return the fruit, the good fruit he gave us. So when Jesus, he said, from their fruits, you will know them. Well, if you are a person who follow Jesus, you will have the fruit of Jesus with you, not the fruit of the devil. And then if we look at this title here, who is better? I mean, even the question doesn't sound really right. Better. Hmm. How can a Christian be better than a Christian? What does better mean? The word better is a language base, you know, to understand that we are comparing between two things, or maybe more. And to understand that this comparison is happening for uh, finding out uh, a better, maybe product, maybe person, uh, maybe food, maybe, maybe. But when it's come to faith, 
how somebody faith and he is believing the same God can be better than someone else who believe in the same God. That is strange, isn't it? Because we are people who have the same faith. We believe in one Lord. We believe in one Messiah. We believe in one God. We believe in the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. We believe in the Messiah, crucifixion and resurrection. We believe that he is coming back. We believe that all of us are being saved by the grace of the Lord. And now there is some philosophy here and there, but this is what we believe in. The philosophy is just an accessories. It's not even important. And actually the accessories is what make people have differences and they uh, divide themselves. They, they, you know, they have too much constru con construct in the accessory, not in the person. To make it simple for you, like there is a woman she is wearing ear and earring. Let me try to find the woman. So a woman she is wearing earrings, and uh, we ask people to describe for us what they see in the screen. There is somebody will say, "I saw a woman." Someone else will say, I saw the earring. <laughs> and uh, what do you like about this, uh, this picture? One of them, he would say, I like the earring. I mean, this person, he, he totally forgot the woman. The woman is not even there. He just saw the earring, you know? The earring is more important than the woman for that person, somehow. So every one of us, he see as he wish, and he see as he decide. He go blind when he want. He see what he want. Remember that. You see what you want. Like I can go right now, like I, I've been to many countries. I can see the country as dirty, uh, bad, uh, nuts, like, you know, I mean, I can't compare between a street in, uh, let us say, uh, most expensive area of uh, Paris, and then compare it to a street in Philippines, in the, you know, poor people area. So if you are liking, you are trying to find something, you will find it, what you are looking for. The compare should not be between earrings. What about we compare but about hearing, not the earring? Earring is an accessory. You put in your head, if you are a female. Now, for some, some male, they put it, I don't know why, but eh, maybe some cultures, they have that. Uh, but what is important is not the hearing, is the hearing. What this ear can hear and what this ear can discover. It's like you have a big radar, satellite radar, and this radar is so huge. It looked like very high technology, but can receive nothing. This will remind me of NASA when they were speaking and making articles about receiving messages from the aliens in the sky for more than 20 years. And you can find it, by the way, you search. For more than 20 years, every day they hear, no, sorry, not 20 years, uh, I don't know how many years, but many, many years. Uh, Every day they, they receive a message from the aliens. Every day in the same time. In the morning time. So the NASA, they wait for the message every day. In certain moment or a certain time. And the alien, they send message. And then after some time they discover that there's no message, it was a guy making coffee in the same time, same day, every day, in the microwave. And the microwave is generating false uh, reception by satellite. And those NASA, they thought it was an alien. And the newspaper talk about it. And then one day, this microwave broke. It's not working no more. So they have to replace it. They throw it in the garbage. No message, no more. The message is gone. There's no alien. 
What happened? There's no alien. What happened? The alien, maybe the guy who was sending us messages die. Maybe there's alien, they don't they are upset from us. And the newspaper they start talking again about what's happening, why the alien stopped sending they send us the messages, and they, everybody has started giving you his uh, scientist's uh, uh, perspective of what's going on, maybe the end of the world, maybe they decide to invade us. You know, just say those things and people go crazy, you know. It was a microwave. They put the microwave back, the message is back. And some of us, we have the same issue. We have a microwave. And we don't want to turn off the microwave because we decided to receive certain message from the aliens. And the aliens, in this case, is a priest. The aliens are priests. They make themselves as they are sent by God to you. Like, come on, we are the men of God, and you are nobody. He's the priest. They are the aliens. Hmm. And then we find that the alien is nothing but a microwave. He broke. He do scandals. He can be a thief. He can be a child molester. He can be a fake father. He can be an evil teacher. So why would you listen to such an alien? Who divide us? Who separate us? Who make us even go in war against each other? One of the unique things about a human being, he loved mystery. He loved mystery. He loved conspiracy. He enjoyed it. Just say UFO. And you will see your video will come with a lot of uh, view. You know, just say I uh, make a video in your backyard and do some Photoshop, whatever. I saw a UFO uh, in the sky, and maybe this is the was the shoe of your wife thrown at you because you did not go to work since last January. But it's UFO, my friend. It's a flying object. You know, so. People, they love mystery. People, they love to listen to others who bring them. There's a, there's a guys in YouTube. I don't want to mention their names. They are Christians. The end of the time, the perfect moon, the big moon, the bloody moon, the blood moon, the flood in China, the end of the time. And, you know, people, they come. People, they come from everywhere. It's very, very interesting for the crowd. The end of the time. And this guy is telling you the end of the time. That's it. There's a flood in China. And those poor people, they listen to them. I mean, didn't you have enough? And every day there's a, there's a prophecy. The prophecy is happening. And, uh, you know, those people actually, they, they hurt the faith of the Christians. They don't help them. Because by time, maybe the person, he, you know, he listened to you once, twice, and then he will start noticing that those people are fraud. I mean, anything happening in the world, it's a fraud prophecy. Trump, he lost the election, you know, to prophecy. Like, what? Even this is in the Bible. Trump is in the Bible, too. Even Trump is in the Bible, my friend. They are the same as other religions, without mentioning who. They see the name of their God in the zucchini. So we have to be smart. And we do not need to listen to aliens who they are not exist. We have God. And we put our trust on him. So when God, he speak about anything, we are believers in him, not in a priest. Not in a Christian prince. Christian prince can do bad, can be uh, uh, a, a big, big sinner, can be a liar, can be, uh, you know, whatever. You can, you, you have the list of sin in the world. Because most of teachers, they speak good and they do bad. Listen to them, but don't do as they do. Just listen to them. They speak good, 
but they do bad. So what we will do? We will listen to whom? Teachers can be bad, and most of them they are bad. And the microwave is not working no more. The alien is not speaking to us. And we don't want to listen to them. So we speak to whom? We listen to whom? Well, we have the Bible. And this is why, actually, I choose in this picture for you. Let me put it on the screen again. Anyone can tell me this picture is about what? Let us see how many of you can find out what this picture really presents. Anyone can tell me? What do you think this picture presents what? Who want to help? Who did figure it out? I know the sound takes some time for people to, to find out about the talent. Exactly. So, and it's amazing, it's about three. It's amazing, it's about three. We have a three major churches, Catholic, Protestant, Orthodox. And actually, all the rest is like going underneath of them. When the Lord, he spoke in parables, he spoke for a reason. You see, that this is the beautiful thing about the Messiah. You do not need to have a PhD to understand him. You can be a farmer, who lost your four first four in you know, a four tooth and you even you cannot even uh, you know old person who cannot even pronounce words and you listen to the word of Jesus you don't need to know even how to read how to write let somebody tell you the story you can be a kid you are seven years old and you can be a person who is 70 years old you can be a male or can be a female you can be educated you can be not educated you can be a person who speak languages have degrees in philosophy or a person who is just a construction worker. He work all day hard labor and he have hard time even to read a book because he's so tired. But all of them, they will enjoy the story. And why it's made as in a form of a story. The Bible says so they might understand. So we might make it clear for them. The God is not the author of the confusion. We do not need aliens to explain to us the Bible. So there's a Lord, and this Lord, he have three servants. And this Lord, he told the servants, well, I'm going to give you something to take care of. I want to see how you deal with it. It's time to, to see how good, trustworthy you are, how, uh, how you think, what do you do? What you can do with my money. My money here is my gift, whatever I give you. You see, everything around us, we can call it money too. Earth, land, trees, gold, silver, cars, house. In the world today is equal to money, but when God, he gave it to us, it's not money. It's a valuable lifehood. So the Lord, he told his servants, I will give you uh, the first one. I will give you, uh, you can, by the way, change the numbers. You know, here, the, the story in the, in the Bible is not about just, it's not about the numbers only. I mean, like he gave him five or he gave him six and the other one he gave him, let us say three, and he gave him the other one two, or he gave him five exactly as a number in, uh, in the Bible. But, what is important here is what they will do after with what the Lord he gave them. And you will notice that the one who the Lord he gave him five, you know, whatever 
let us say containers of seed, container of gold, containers of whatever it is, whatever the Lord he gave you. The one who gave five, he came back and he gave five. And five more. And the Lord, let us go to the Bible so we can read together what I've done speaking about. And there's, by the way, there's a parable before this one, which is very fantastic too. But I decided to use this one for today as a Bible study. So we can, we can really inspire by this and notice who is really the best of us as the best of Christian. So the one who, have, uh, who gave him five talents and the other one, he got two. And the other one uh, got one. So we have five. We have two, and we have one. And then the Lord, he gave them time, go, you know. Uh, go and see, let us see what you can do with it. You know, this is from me, and... Uh, I'm going to ask you about what you did after some time. And the time here present the life we have, you know, as we see in verse number 19. And after much time, which means long time, the Lord of the servant came and took an account of them. And this is present the Lord, the Messiah, when he come back. It's going to be a long time. People die, people live, people born, people war, uh, disasters, you know, people go and people come, but the Lord is coming back and he will take his account no matter when. It doesn't matter how long the time will be. People do think, huh, well, there's people die before me and people die before them and people die before, 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 and uh, why the Lord is going to come now? So it doesn't matter if he come now or after you die, he will come and he will pay. And he will ask you for his account. Then the first one who gave him the five, he gave the five back and he gave five more. And he said, my Lord, you gave me five talents. And here you remember here, it says talents, which I like really very much. Like I was using, uh, you know, gold, silver, you know, talents. I want you to, do, to put that in your, in your note. Talents. And those uh, talents can be many things inside you. Not necessarily, as the picture show you, like maybe gold or maybe bread or maybe whatever it is. The talents really is the gift of God that is given to you. Every one of us given different talents. And what is special about this story is not how many talents you've been given, it's about how many talents you give back. If you read with me, continue reading, you will see. Uh, behold, I have, uh, I, I have gained five other tenants on the top of them. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. The Lord is happy with this servant. What he did exactly? He did not bring back what he just received. I mean, I, the, you, you have no... Uh, you, you did nothing if you just bring me back what I gave you. What, what you did exactly. I gave you, I gave you a body. I gave you ears. I gave you eyes. And then you come back me and you die and you have ears and you have, what does that mean? I mean you, you gave me nothing. I left you as a body. You came back the same. You have been faithful over a little. So this person, he is trustworthy. He did not abuse what the, he's given to him. 
and he multiply. I shall set you over much. Enter the joy of your Lord. So this person, he received the blessing, and he was doing the right thing. And he, who has the two talents, he come and he said, My Lord, you gave me two talents. Behold, I gained two other talents in the top of them. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I shall set you over much. Enter the joy of, my, of, of your Lord. And here you notice that the first one is five and the second one is two, but both of them, they receive the same greeting and the same blessing and the same approval. Do you, do you, do you understand what, what, why this is important? Because you might say now the first one, will he have 10? Right? The first one, he'd been given five. He returned 10. The one who have two, he returned four. But you will notice they are equal. Why? Because the Lord, he will judge you by what he gave you. He's not asking you more. Do you understand? Like if there's one of us, he is in disability, a brother in Christ. He is not, you know, like normal, average human being. He is, and you know, he have a, a, some problems, health problems, whatever problems, God bless him. Is he required to do the same as we do? No. Absolutely not. Because God will judge him by the gifts, by the talents he gave him. Do we agree? So if somebody with a special need, somebody is born with a special need, is he a Christian? Is he going to go to heaven? Absolutely. Because the Lord will judge him by what he gave him. He will not judge him like you and me. Because we have way more talent, which is a gift from the Lord anyway. And this is to examine us, not to make us better. We are not better than them. If somebody has a special need, doesn't mean I'm better than him. Absolutely not. If somebody is blind, doesn't mean I'm better than him. Because he might see even better than me. There's millions of people, they have eyes, they see nothing. They are pervert. So, the talent you are given is not really for your benefit. If you think about it, as much it is, to test you. To see how you, what you will do with it. How you return it. So the Lord, who, the one who gave him zero talent, he will not ask you to multiply. Because he gave you zero. And then it's not going to be fair that I gave you zero and I ask you to bring me more. I cannot multiply the zero. The Lord is the Lord of justice. This is why he said, if you don't become like those little ones, you will not enter the kingdom of my father. Why? Because those little ones, they have zero tenants for now. You know, just, yeah. I mean, a child is like a rabbit. He eats, sleep, snore. Most of the day he's sleeping. So how I can judge him for what? I gave him zero talent yet. So the talent numbers here is not what's going to make you judge for being bad or good as differences. Like the one who is giving five doesn't make him better than the one who is giving two. And the proof that the one who is giving two, he multiplied them. And he made them four. The Lord did not say to him, but the other one, he gave me ten. The Lord, he was satisfied with him very well. Because you made the two double. And the other guy, he just did the same. And then we have the person who have the one talent given to him. He also, who had received one talent, came. And he said, my Lord, I had known that you are a hard man. And uh, you reap 
where you have not sworn. Look how evil he is. And that you gather from where you have not threshed. And I was afraid. And I went. And I buried the tenant in the ground. Behold, it's yours. This person, he thinks he is smart. And obviously, he is evil. And even he described the Lord in a very bad description. You take what you do, what, what not belong to you. You harvest what you did not even put seed for it. But this is absolutely false. The tenants is a seed. He gave you tenants. And when you plant the seeds, he is not harvesting what does not belong to him. Because you yourself, you belong to him anyway. Aren't you called the servant? This person, the Lord, he described him as the following. His master answered and said to him, You evil and lazy servant, you know what I reaped, where I had not sown, and gathered from where I have not threshed. I don't know if I'm reading the word correctly in English. Forgive me if I am not. And I was incumbent upon you to cast my money to the exchange so that when I could come I could acquire, acquire my own with interest but we know that the Bible is against interest right the Bible is always teaching against interest so this is not the interest of the bank we are talking about take therefore the tenant from him and gave it to the one who has Ten talents. And here we might ask ourselves, why the Lord he gave it to the one who have ten talents? Anyone think about it? Remember we said the one being given to he made them four, and one he have five, he been given. Uh, five plus five, ten. So why the Lord he gave it? He gave this talent, talent the one he had, this person. He gave it to the one who been given five before. Anyone thought about it? Let's see if we can receive an answer. I know it take time for the for my voice to come to you. So why why the Lord he decide to give the this one tenant as a as a gift to the one who gave the ten tenants? Because he did the most father will. Well, the second one. No, no, I'm not asking why he took it from him. I'm saying why he gave it to the one who gave ten talents. Now, we know why he took it from him, because he doesn't deserve it. That's this person. But why he, he, he says here, take therefore the talent, the one talent he gave him to this person, and give it to the one who has the ten talents. Who want to think with me? Because believe his master. No, no, we know that he, this is why he took it away from him. We are asking now why it's given to the one who have 10 talents. He can produce more from this talent. Well, if you go, you will see that he is the first one to come with the fruits. Right? All of them, let us say we are in a room. And I have this, let us, let us look at the picture again. We are in the room, and I gave three servants at the same time. You take five, you take two, you take one. Go. The time watch start now. The first one who come back is the one who took five. So even his burden was heavier, because his talent is more. 
he was coming back first. He harvested, he produced first. He is the first comer with the fruits. And that means the excitement, the happiness, the, the, the readiness. He's ready. He was the first to be ready. He was the first to give. He was the first to be there. So give this talent for this person who brought the 10 talents. And here you will notice that a gift was given to you. It might be taken from you and given to someone else. And this is very important in the Bible teaching. Many of us, they think they will live forever. Many of us, they think they will stay young forever. They will stay healthy forever. They will stay wealthy forever. They will stay whatever, you know, they think they are eternal. Many of us, we do bully, you know, other people. They make fun of them. But one day you might, everything you have taken away from you in the speed of light. Your health can be taken from you. You used to make fun of somebody who is disabled. Well, guess what? You might be disabled in a second. You say, thank God, making fun of people look, or somebody is, I'm not like him, you know, you know, then you might find yourself even in a worse situation. And you might find even the one who you made fun of, he will go to heaven and you will not. For he was accepting what he has, and he did not make fun of somebody, sound like he is more bad than him. He is not making fun of people. He is not uh, uh, abusing others just because he was. Um, he have more talents, like what we see in the world today. There's somebody have many talents, and he is so proud about it. But we know that all those talents will not stay with you. They don't even belong to you. Like a few days ago, we made a video about this actor who died. He spent his life making movies. But where is the quality of the movie? Where is the quality of ethic? Where is the quality of the talents? So you made movies for what? And what the money you, you, you made will do to you? When you even do, go in the grave, even your watch, they will take it away from you. Your credit card will be canceled. And your bank account, all the money you have there is going to be given to people who hate you most. <laughs> this is what makes life is funny that because people they think that they have talents and they worship their talents you know they worship it they are so proud about it so they become instead of using the talents to be humble to serve uh, instead of making their own joy is to use those talents to serve they made those talents, they used them to control, to enslave, to abuse, to use others. And here I want to say what this is will conclude uh, or conclu conclusion about when we speak about the Catholic, the Protestant, the Orthodox. My friend, the Lord will not ask you if you are Catholic or Protestant or Orthodox, trust me. Anyone who say to you he will, he is lying to you. The Bible is so clear. And what we just gave you now is the Bible. The Lord, he said, from their fruits, you shall know them. The three of you will go back to your Lord. And the three here, I don't want to give them names, because the Lord himself did not give us names. Do you see? It says servants. He did not even name them. He said servants. He didn't even say the verse servant number one, servant number two. So he said the first servant, the second servant, the servants. All of them are servants, equally servants. So if you are a Christian, and Christian is not a Protestant, as many like in America, when they use the word Christian, they usually they mean Protestant. That is a false statement. Christian is a name given in the Bible for those who follow Jesus. 
So Christian is the Catholic, Christian is the Orthodox, Christian is the Protestant. And actually, if I am you, I will never use the word Catholic. I will never use the word Protestant. I will never use the word Orthodox. I will say I'm Christian. Is there a better name than the name of Christ? Be honest with me. Be truthful with yourself. If there is a name you are more proud of more than the name of Christ, so why you say I'm Catholic? Why you say I'm Protestant? Why you say I'm Orthodox? You should say I'm a Christian, or I follow only Christ. And this is how the Lord one day will know each one of us individually, not by the name of the church. Which means in the same church, you might find somebody have five talents, he bring them ten. And somebody have one talent, he bring nothing. The same church. Which means those three will be exist in every church of those. In the Catholic, in the Protestant, in the Orthodox. And there is people who will be cast into hellfire. And there is people who will be rewarded. Not because of the church name, but because of their tenants. So I would love to see Christians love each other, be united, and let us compete with our talents to do better, to love each other, to be people of Christ. If you cannot love your brother in Christ, how you claim even to be Christian? How you can even say the word of Christ in your mouth when your mouth is dirty, full of hate and hatred and enmity to others? How you can be a follower of Christ, the one who said in the cross, forgive them, Father, they do not know what they are doing. He was saying that to those who they are killing him in the moment. Today, we don't even handle a person saying to us one word. He's not putting nails in our hands. True Christian is the one who compete. I would love to see Christians doing way better than me. And you see, if you are a, if you are a loving person, you wish others to do even better than you. Because all of us, we will end in heaven anyway. We are the delicious fruits of God. We might have different colors. You might be Asian, you might be African, you might be white. Who care? All of us, we are the fruit of the Lord. So when the Lord, he says, from their fruit, you shall know them. He was not talking about churches' names and even your names. Who care what's your name? You can change your name. But you cannot hide your idea from God. So my message to the Christians, and when I say Christian again, I mean all Christians, for there's nothing is called Catholic for me, nothing is called Protestant, nothing called Orthodox. There is people who follow Christ. The one who follow a man is a fool. The wages of sin is death. The verse we were talking about it yesterday, or the day before. And that wages is for all of us not for a specific church or a specific group, all mankind. The wages of sin is death. There's only one person he can save you from that death. So I would love to see Christians stop using those terms, stop using those words. Never say, I am a Catholic. Never say, I am an Orthodox. Never say, I am Protestant. Say, I am a follower of Christ. I follow no priest. I obey, I obey no, no man. I obey only the Lord. The man can divide us. The man, he can spread hatred. The man can be doing business. There's many in order just to protect their business. Because their business is the bent in division. Like, my product is better than his product. Come here. And when you come here, make donation. It's a business. So don't let them fool you. Be a true follower of Christ. And the one who believes in the Trinity is a Christian. The one who believes in the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit is a Christian. 
the one who believe in the death and the resurrection, the coming back of Jesus is a Christian. The one who believe in the four gospels is a Christian. The one who believe that Jesus is the Son of God is a Christian. The one who believe that he is coming back and he will take us and he will ask us for our talents. And he's ready with his talents for the Lord when he called him for the account. He is a Christian. It's not you who say to him, who you are not Christian. It's not for me to say to you, you are no Christian, unless you don't follow those. For this is the faith. The Lord who said, who said whoever believe in me and I will live. He didn't say uh, a white person, black person, Asian person, Catholic or Protestant or whoever. Believe in me and die, he will live. I am the way. I am the life. I am the resurrection. Anyone will seek any other way. He is not seeking heaven. If you seek the way of a priest, you are seeking hell. For you abandon the true and the only way. Even when you follow he will say to me, well, this priest is full of Jesus. Well, my friend, who care about he follow Jesus or not? He follow Jesus, he will save himself. Why you want to follow him? Follow You follow Jesus too. You know, what I'm, you know what I'm saying? If you think about him highly, well, that's wonderful. He's, high, he's a good person. But you do not need the priest. You follow Jesus. Jesus is there. He said, knock at my door, I will open for you. I do not need the priest to knock the door for me. And why the priest is better than me? And why he can be better than me? And why I cannot even be the priest? And what priest mean? The Lord, he have disciples. And the disciples is every one of us. You go and you teach and you preach and you bring more talent with you. So you need to ask yourself today, and maybe this is a tougher question for many of us. How many people we help to, to come to Jesus? This is the talent we are talking about. One day you will be asked, so you went, you live 50, 60, 70, 80 years in your life, 100 years, God bless you. Then the Lord will ask you, well, I gave you one talent, what you did with, us, with it? You say, I was afraid, I, you, know, you know, then you will see what will happen. So if you spend your life and you could not do one good thing. What was your life for? And that what make you a believer, not being a Christian as Catholic or Protestant or Orthodox, but by being a Christian as follower of Christ, and you do what Christ he said. Refrain from mentioning names of anyone here. We are not talking about people. We are talking about facts and bible teaching so i hope my topic was good for you today and uh, if you like this channel we do from time to time bible study and sometimes we take uh, uh, calls and this channel here is just for the bible and nothing but the bible and the reason we want to keep it clean and pure can we ask the uh, saints for intercession because I am a Catholic and it's called uh, Latini of Saint? Hey, my friend, I can ask you to pray for me. Nothing wrong with that, correct? The Lord, he said, the Bible says that when the Lord, he was resurrected, there was many saints resurrected with him too. The Bible says that. So there is saints who they are alive. Like some people, they say to you, oh, they are praying to dead saints. They are not. However, I can ask brothers to pray for me. And you can ask me to pray for you. And this is a Christian love. Nothing wrong with that. But in the same time, why I don't pray to the Lord directly? Isn't the Lord, he says, every two of you mention my name. I will be between them. I will be the third. Just now, he is here. Pray to him. So nothing wrong with asking our brothers or sisters to pray for us. We believe as a Christian in the power of a prayer. 
many voices rising for your sake. Somebody is sick, no problem. But still the Savior is one, is not the saints. The saint is just our brothers and sisters. They are not gods. So I say, and this is my opinion, it's up to you. you know, because if you do it, I don't think you are being doing something wrong. Uh, is it wrong to believe in the Pope? Well, uh, I don't think even anyone believes in the Pope, because the Pope himself, he you know, he he confesses his sin every every Sunday. So how anyone believe in the Pope when the Pope himself he agree that he is a sinner? So I think there is a lot of misconception about the Catholic uh, faith, about the belief in the Pope as they worship the Pope, which is false. No Catholic worship the Pope. So let us stay away from this uh, uh, false propaganda, you know, against uh, each other. Because when we do that, we prove two things. Number one, we are ignorant. We do not investigate before we open our mouth. Like, do the Catholic believe in the Pope? Who said they believe in the Pope? They believe that the Pope is a leader. They don't worship the Pope. And the Pope himself, he confesses his sin every, every, every Sunday. And he asks the Lord for forgiveness. So don't don't be naive and uh, listen to what people say to you. And you know, I'm not a Catholic, and I don't care for those names really. But I don't like it when people they say lies about each other because this is the devil himself. This is the devil himself. We don't want to be devils. Somebody says Pope he want to unite all religious Islam Buddhism. Uh, Pope is satanic. My friend, this is a lie because you cannot unite. And I, I saw all of the, the comment of any pope. None of them he says uh, what you are saying. And please don't come here again. That is a false statement. If somebody he have a political position and he sit with other leaders from other religions just for peace purpose, so we don't kill each other, he is not being bad. But he is doing some kind of politics. However, he is not our Lord. He's a man like everybody. Because now he became like a king. Actually, he have a, he have a country to run. He have embassies. So many people, they throw rocks. If you are in his place, you will maybe you do the same and even more. People are silly and people, they say stupid things. And evil things too. Uh, there's many other churches, they say the same. They bring other beliefs, which is not even Christian beliefs, to their churches. Uh, and they call it interfaith. But nobody judge them. But if the Pope, he do that, he is evil. Hypocrisy, you know, the, the exchange hypocrisy, the, the, the game. This is why what we are fighting now. We are fighting that we should be united and we don't follow. We don't follow those things. You can ask me this question, Marius, about kissing the Quran in different channel. But let me tell you, my friend, uh, what you said again is a silly. In that scene, the sheikh, he kissed the Bible, and in return, the Pope, he kissed the Quran. It's a politics. So people are really silly, very silly. He's doing politics. And I'm not giving him excuse, but you are not even being honest with yourself. And what the Pope have to do with the Catholic too. So, you know, people, they are really, you see the evil, you see the devil? You see how the devil works? Let us say, I am a leader of a church, and I'm a very bad person. And then you start casting your stones at my people, not at me. Using me as an excuse to bury everybody who come to my church. But those are decent, nice people. They love Jesus. They pray to Jesus. No, no, no. Look at this guy. Look what he did. Let us cast the stone at them, all of them. We are going to bury them right now. This is not a Christian behavior. And let me make it simple for you. If not the Catholic, none of you will be Christian by now. And we spoke about that in different channels. And we can ask me the same question later in other channels. This is about Christianity here. We don't want to go in details. It was the Catholic who protect Christianity from occupation and conquer. And this is a fact. It's history. And the one who deny his history is a fool. So I want to say thank you for being here.
Again, uh, you don't have to agree with me, and who cares if you agree or not? I'm a Christian prince, and by my Lord, I will be victorious. And by my Lord, I take his side. I don't take side of a church leader. I don't take a side of a Catholic or a Protestant or Catholic or, or, or Orthodox. I take the side of the Lord only, for he is only my savior. No priest, no bishop, no pope, no man, nobody except the Messiah, our Lord, our Savior. Anything else, every human being is a sinner, including me and you. And the one who follows a sinner, he is a fool. The one who put his trust in a sinner, he is a fool. We have only one perfect name, and no name beside him. His name is holy. His act is holy. His work is holy. And he was the walking, talking, living word of God. In this filthy earth, he was the only holy. So why we want to follow anyone? The one who follow priest, they will end with the priest. The one who follow Jesus, they will end with Jesus. Everyone goes where he belongs. The fly go to the flower or to the garbage. For sure, the fly go to the garbage. And the bees, they go to the flower. So you choose to be the fly or the bees. Every human being have a lot of garbage on him. Every human being. We are covered by sin. We shower ourselves by sin. And then we claim to be clean. And then what we do? We go and follow a priest who is covered by garbage. And his garbage is sin in this case. Why we don't go and be the bees, the smart one, who go to the flower, the true flower, and that is Jesus. We do not need them. We need Jesus, my friend. And those who have a lot of hatred against each other, they are no Christians. Doesn't matter what their names is. For if you do not learn about the love of Jesus, you never know Jesus. If you cannot love even your enemy, how you can love your brother in Christ? And if you cannot love your brother in Christ, how you can love your enemy? Those people who love division, to divide us, to spread hatred, they are satanic. They are Satan himself. God is one. God is love. And love never fails. And my weapon is the word of God. What is yours? Thank you all for being here. May the Lord bless you. And I will see you soon again. Christ as Lord. And don't forget, in order to find us where we are going to go live, we are going in for now in the Arabian Prophet. You go to patreon.com slash Christian Prince. Not to make a donation. I'm not asking for a donation. Just to check where I'm going to be live. Okay? Because I know people think that, oh, go there to make donation. No. We are not doing business here. So you go to Patreon, and you click at the last video you will see, and then you will know where Christian Prince is going for life, which means you will be able to find out what channel I go in, because I have many channels. Thank you very much. May the Lord bless you. Christ is Lord. Christ is our Savior. Christ is name, is my name. And that's why I call myself Christian Prince, for there is no name better than his name. Christian Prince, I am Prince by him, not because I'm born of a king, not because my father is a king, but he made us prince and princes. For you, when you believe in Jesus, you are a child of God. And if God is your father, who is better? This is why we Christians are unique. We are the only faith who say to God, our father, that is a great authority. He broke the ice with us. He broke the line with us. He said, there's no border between me and you. You call me father, I call you my children. And if you are a child of God, you learn how to love as a child of God, for God is love. And those who don't have love in their heart, they never know God. They are not with God, and they are serving for sure the anti-God, the antichrist. Thank you, and God bless you, and see you soon again. Take care.